Hey, it's Dr. Clark. If you remember a few days ago, I posted about how the uh, spleen was finally getting some respect. Like literally the day after I posted that, a new article came out that shows that the appendix of all things actually has a role in the human body. I, I you know, it just goes to show once again, I won't beat this uh, dead horse too much. You have no spare parts. The problem with the modern or tradition, actually I shouldn't say modern, the problem with medicine as a whole is it has compartmentalized the human body so much that it's lost the big picture. That's why I see streams of people coming into my office diagnosed with everything under the sun and they haven't gotten any help. One of the reasons they haven't gotten help is the prevailing attitude and part of the prevailing attitude in a microcosm is, is this idea that you don't need your spleen, you can get by without that. You don't need your gallbladder, you can get by without that. Oh, and you don't really need your appendix. Well, newsflash, you do need your appendix. Some great research was just done. And what they basically found is that the appendix actually can be a little reservoir for the good bacteria that live in your intestines that it can release when it needs to, such as in cases of diarrhea or infection or something like that. So let me give you a scenario, and I don't think any research has been done on this, but people that have ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, Crohn's disease, those types of things, I wonder how many of those people have had their appendix out. I would like to see what, those, uh, what the results would be of a study like that. I think this has big implications, not only just from a, you know, a cultural mindset standpoint, from a real uh, impact. I mean, I see a lot of people with autoimmune conditions, and one of the things that these people often have is intestinal inflammation. And many of these people, if you go back and look at their history, what did they have? They had some sort of gut infection, they had a parasite. Some of them still have these things and don't have any idea that that's what they have. Now, the appendix obviously plays a role in this, and then maybe what's happened with some of these people is their appendix is failing on them, or maybe they had their appendix out and now they don't have that reserve. It's kind of like the spleen. The thing I said about the spleen, the spleen is a reservoir for immune cells that it can dump into your system when you need them. If you don't have appendix, you have a decreased ability to respond to something. Now, the, the textbooks, in fact, the study was cool. It said that perhaps the textbooks ought to be changed. Uh, when Darwin first looked at the appendix, he thought it was a vestigial organ and all these other things. What we know now is is that every single part of your body has a role to play in order to keep you healthy and especially when you've deviated from health and you become sick. Traditional medicine is a broken system folks. I hope I don't have to really convince you of that. <laughs> if you could spend a day in my life, in my office, and listen to the people that come in here, you'll see that modern medicine, even though it means well, and I don't blame the doctors, I basically blame the pharmaceutical industry for creating a culture and an idea that you know you can learn the body in chapters and somehow we're going to get everybody well if we have a GI specialist and a lung specialist and a, a brain specialist. Well, what I do in my office is I take a step back and I become all those specialists at once. I look at everything. I used to tell people I was a specialist. I think I should tell people now I'm a generalist. And I hope you don't think I'm digressing too much, but my point is, is this, it's great. In, in one week, I posted on the spleen getting respect and finally the appendix getting respect. You know, what's going to happen next? We're going to find out that uh, your brain is important too. Uh, to me, those things are very odd. So that's Dr. David Clark, and this is The Place for Answers, and I'll be talking to you soon.